Hey, let's talk about the HIV life cycle. First of all, this is a lymphocyte. And this is a lymphocyte on drugs. <laughs> totally kidding. But this particular lymphocyte is a helper T cell. And what a helper T cell does is it finds pathogens such as bacteria and viruses and then calls out for other cells to come destroy them. So look at this helper T cell. It is one micron across or 10,000 nanometers. And this little 100 nanometer thing is HIV, the human immunodeficiency virus, AKA a helper T cell's worst enemy. So a few facts before we start the actual life cycle. First fact, HIV is not the only immunodeficiency virus. There's also a simian immunodeficiency virus, or SIV, along with a feline immunodeficiency virus, or FIV. Together, these viruses make genus lentivirus, which means that these viruses have a long incubation period, or there's just a lot of time before symptoms are shown. And the family is retrovirus. Retroviruses are really special. For example, in this virus, there are two molecules of the enzyme reverse transcriptase, along with two molecules of ssRNA, single-stranded RNA. And what reverse transcriptase does is it takes this RNA and converts it to double-stranded DNA. Now let's start the HIV life cycle. Here's your cell, and here's your HIV particle. On the surface of the cell is a protein complex that will bind to the HIV. There are three proteins. CD4 is the outer protein that usually binds to the virus. CXCR4 and CCR5 are co-receptors, though any protein complex can come with any combination of the two. On the surface of HIV is a two-protein protein complex, glycoprotein 41 on the inside and glycoprotein 120 on the outside to bind to CD4. When GP120 binds to CD4, GP41 contracts and forces the membranes of the cell and the virus to fuse, delivering a capsid to the inside of the cell. The capsid contains the RTs and the SSRNAs. The capsid travels along the microtubule to get to the cell's nucleus. Because microtubules hold the overall structure of the cell, it's kind of like all roads lead to mega except all microtubules lead to the nucleus. Inside the traveling capsid on the way to the nucleus, the reverse transcriptases convert the SSRNAs to DSDNAs. Finally, the capsid reaches the nucleus and enters through a nuclear pore, or a hole in the nuclear membrane. Once in the nucleus, the capsid uncoats its protein shell, releasing the reverse transcriptase and double-stranded DNA. The next part's where things get a little sticky. Inside the nucleus, there's HIV DNA and host DNA. HIV DNA attaches itself to a sticky, or open end, of the host DNA. The HIV genes will eventually be transcribed by a polymerase, and will be sent out of the nucleus to a ribosome, where that RNA is translated into HIV proteins. Some of these proteins are regulator proteins, which go back into the nucleus and stimulate the transcription of more HIV genes in a positive feedback loop. The HIV proteins migrate to and accumulate at a single area on the inside of the cell membrane. The, con the conglomeration creates a bulge, which buds off into an immature HIV particle, containing two RT particles and two SSRNA particles. The following process is called maturation. The immature HIV has proteins attached to the inner walls of its membrane, which are detached by an enzyme called protease. The proteins accumulate in the middle of the cell around the RT and SSRNA as a capsid. Now it's mature HIV, completing the HIV life cycle. Millions of HIV particles are created per helper T cell, exhausting that cell of its resources and thus killing it, and therefore killing the foundation of the entire immune system. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.